Okay, here we're going to prepare a consolidated statement of cash flows here, and we're going to use the indirect method here. And we're going to go through it step by step here. So for example here, Corporation P is going to buy 80% of Corporation S subsidiary, and they're going to pay cash, $1 million in cash for that 80% interest. So uh, that implies here that the fair value of the uh, Corporation S or subcorporation is $1,250,000 here just doing our arithmetic. So what do we have to do here for our step-by-step -step analysis here? So the first thing we have to look at is the corporation uh, subsidiary corporation's balance sheet here and that uh, is based on a 1231x1 date here. So we have to look at the book value and the fair value. So we have to determine the fair value here for the assets and the liabilities. Well for this example the book value equals the fair value for the assets and liabilities. So, and the only adjustment that uh, is related to the investment here is a, the goodwill here of $250,000. And uh, let's go out and look at how we, how would we handle that here. So, we have the fair value of our net assets. We have to determine that. So, we take the uh, fair value of the total net assets here, one million four hundred twenty thousand dollars, less the fair value of the total liability. These here, four hundred twenty thousand dollars, gives us a fair value of our net assets at one million dollars here. So, looking down here, the implied price here of one million two hundred fifty thousand, less the fair value of the net assets here of one million dollars, gives us goodwill here of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for this example here. So, based on that, we have to go uh, here and determine a distribution schedule here. So, uh, looking at our distribution schedule here, the uh, parent buys 80% here for $1 million cash. So that we know here. So we, we even determined here the implied fair value of the subsidiary is $1,250,000 and uh, the non-controlling interest would get 20% of that for $250,000. So the important thing that we have to look here on this distribution schedule is next here the book value acquired. Now that would be the common stock of $400,000 and the retained earnings of $600,000. And we've got that off our um, balance sheet here for the subsidiary looking up here. So our total equity going down to our distribution schedule here would be $1 million here based on the common stock of $400,000 plus the retained earnings of $600,000. So uh, subtracting that total equity here $1 million from the fair value of the subsidiary of $1,250,000 we get our excess of the fair value over the book value here of $250,000. And we determine that here to be goodwill here going up to our asset adjustments. That total adjustment here was $250,000 as we can see here on our balance sheet here for the subsidiary. So going back to our distribution schedule here, well, we would divide up here this total equity here of $1 million, 80% here goes to the parent, uh, that would be a book value of 800000 So the excess here, the fair value over the book value, $1 million over uh, the 800000 is 200000 And then the non-controlling interest would, their uh, fair value here of the equity would be 200000 Subtracting that from the 250000 here, we get 50000 applied to goodwill. Okay, for step two here, we have to determine the changes in our assets and liabilities here from a 1231x1 versus 1231x2. And what we're given here is a consolidated balance sheet here for the uh, subsidiary and the parent corporation here at 1231x2. And then we're also given the uh, parent's corporation a balance sheet here on 1231x1 here. And then we can go back up here and or we have our consol or our uh, subsidiaries balance sheet here, uh, the book value versus the fair value, and we'll be working off the fair value here. So we have several uh, items here that we're going to be checking out here. First would be the inventory, our consolidated, we have $908,000 here, and then subtracting out uh, the uh, inventory for the subs subsidiary and the parent here, we get a $188,000 increase in our inventory here on, on the consolidated basis here. And then going back to our property plant and equipment here, this is where we can determine our depreciation here. So we have $2,460,000 here on a consolidated basis. And then if we subtract out uh, our 
uh, book value here or carrying value for the subsidiary and the parent here at the beginning of the year, we get a decrease here in our property planning and equipment for $240,000. And that can be attributed to depreciation here. And then we have one other change here that we want to look at, and that is our current liabilities here. Uh, we have on a consolidated basis $568,000. And then if we subtract out here the parent and the subsidiaries um, uh, current liabilities here, we get $28,000 increase here in our current liabilities on a consolidated basis. Okay, now looking at step three here for our consolidated statement of cash flows here for the parent and the subsidiary corporation. And this is going to be for the year ended 1231X2. And again, we're using this indirect cash flow method. So first looking at our cash flows from operating activities here, we'd have consolidated net income. We're given that $310,000. That was here for both the controlling and non-controlling interest here. And then we have to have our adjustments here to reconcile net income to net cash here. So we have a depreciation expense here of $240,000 that we had calculated before here. So we would add that back here. And then we have an increase in inventory here. Uh, we'd have to subtract that out here of $188,000. And then we'd have to add here any increases in our current liabilities for $28,000. So the total adjustments here would of those amounts here would be $80,000. So adding that to our consolidated net income for the period here, net cash provided by the operating activities here would be $390,000. Now we have to look at our cash flows from our investing activities here. So uh, the payment here for the per, per, uh, purchase here of Corporation S, that's uh, the net amount here would be the cash paid of $1 million less the cash acquired here off the balance sheet that we had for the subsidiary corporation of $40,000 gives us a net amount here paid of $960,000. Next looks at our cash flows from financing activities here. And in this case, the parent corporation here issued common stock, 10,000 shares at $60,000 per share for $600,000. So sale of stock would be recorded here for $600,000. And then Corp P also paid a $20,000 cash dividend here. And then uh, the subsidiary, the non-controlling interest, uh, actually paid a dividend of $10,000 here. But since they only have a 20% interest here, we re record only 20% of that $10,000 for $2,000 here. So the net cash used in financing activities would be the total of these amounts here for $578,000. So the net cash incre net increase in cash here is $8,000. That's the sum of the $310,000 and all these changes here. Uh, they come up to $8,000. Now, uh, cash at the beginning of the year that we had at $600,000. And then the cash at the end of the year that was on off the consolidated basis here would be $608,000 or the net increase in cash here, $8,000 uh, plus the beginning of the year cash year of $600,000. So we've got one other thing that we have to take care of, and that's the schedule of non-cash investing activities here. So uh, at the adjusted value of the assets acquired here was $1,770,000. And if you look back at the balance sheet for the subsidiary, you would see that amount here for the fair value of those assets here of $1,770,000. And then the cash paid by the parent was a $1 million here. So the balance amount would be $770,000. And then they have the liabilities assumed. That comes off the balance sheet of the subsidiary here, $420,000. And then the net uh, non-controlling interest here at the date of acquisition here is $250,000. And we can go back and look at the distribution schedule for that. So this is uh, what our consolidated statement of cash flows would be for the operating, the investing, and the financing activities here. Plus we have the schedule for non-cash investing activities that we have to also create for this consolidation. Okay, for our cash flow statement here, the change in cash for investing activities has to do with our assets here in the balance sheet and our change in cash for financing activities would be our change in liabilities and our change in stockholders equity here in the balance sheet. And then the change in cash for operating activities, that's part of net income or the income statement here on the balance sheet.